All right, guys, I apologize. This may be a little bit longer video than we're used to, but it's a brand new situation. Um, and just try to bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing I want to do is we need to review the coordinate plane. Okay, the coordinate plane. Let's remember that the coordinate plane has an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is here and goes side to side. The y-axis is this one that goes up and down. Okay? And remember that we can plot numbers on this coordinate plane. For example, if I wanted to plot the number or plot the point 1, 3, I would start at the origin and I would always move in the x direction first. X is 1, so I move 1 over. Y is 3, so I move up 3, and there's that point. If I were to plot negative 2, negative 2, again, I start right here in the middle at the origin. I move negative 2 in the x direction and negative 2 in the y direction. If I was going to plot 0, negative 4, I would start here, move 0 in the x direction, and move negative 4 in the y direction. And finally, negative 3, comma 4, I would move negative 3 in the x direction and positive 4 in the y direction. Okay? We need to remember how to do this. It's going to be useful for us later on in the lesson. So having reviewed that, we are now starting to talk about a brand new uh, idea called functions. We've never talked about functions before. Okay? A function is this. It's a special relation with two parts, a domain and a range. Now there's a lot of different names that all mean the same thing. Domain can also be called the input, and it can also be called the x-coordinate. Okay? Range can also be called the output or the y. Alright, so domain is the input and the x. Range is the output and the y. Basically, functions work like, they're like a machine. Okay, let's take this oven for example. The way a function works is, you have something that you put into it, and the function spits out something different. So for example, if you put in brownie batter to the oven, it's going to come back with brownies after it cooks. If you put in turkey to the oven, it's going to come out with a roast turkey. It's going to take that and change it. If you put ice cream into the oven, you're going to get a messy oven. But no matter what happens, you put something in and you get something else out on the other side. That's how functions work. Except with functions, we're talking about numbers, obviously. Okay. This is an example of what your basic function might look like. Okay? Right here. Looks like this. And the way we say this is f of x equals x plus 1. f of x equals x plus 1. F just stands for function, so function of x equals x plus 1. Alright, another example right here, we would say f of x or function of x equals 2x minus 4, and function of x equals 4x squared. Those are all just examples of basic functions. Okay, as I mentioned a minute ago, a function has two parts, domain and range. The domain is the input what do you put into the oven or into the function machine? When you're graphing, this is going to be the x. Range is the second part. It's the output, what comes out of the machine or out of the oven. Uh, when you're graphing, that will be the y. Okay? And here we can see, again, this left side, this f of x part, that's the domain. And then the right side of the equation, that's the range. That's what came out of the function. Okay, it's all a little bit confusing to just talk about until we see an example. So let's go ahead and get into an example here. All right, we've got the function f of x equals x plus 2. And over here we have a chart. And what it says is when the domain is 1, the range will be blank. We need to figure this out. Okay? Well, keep in mind, domain, that's the x, the input. Range is the y, the output. So what it's saying is, when domain is 1, all right, domain is right here. We've got to change this to 1. So instead of f of x, we're going to put in f of 1. Okay, it's just basically saying what happens when we put 1 in instead of x. 
Well, what happens is this. Instead of this x right here, we're going to change that to 1, because we didn't put x into the function, we put 1 into the function. So that becomes 1. The plus 2 stays exactly the same from what it was. And look at what we have, 1 plus 2 equals 3. So what this means is when we put 1 into the function, 3 came out. So when domain is 1, range is 3. Okay? What about when we put 2 into the function? Okay, this time we're putting in 2. What do we get on the other side? Instead of x, it's 2. Plus 2 stays the same. And we get 2 plus 2 equals 4. So when the domain is 2, the range is 4. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. When we put 3 into this particular function, we're going to get 3 plus 2, which equals 5. And when we put 6 in, I'm sorry, not when we put 6, when we put 4 in, function of 4 equals 4 plus 2, which ultimately equals 6. So when domain is 4, range is 6. Okay, and there we go, we just completed that chart. Remember I started this lesson by reviewing graphing. So where does graphing come into this? Well, look at our chart here. We've got, we've got four different x values, domains, and four different y values. We can basically take each one of these and treat it like a point on a graph. The first one being 1, 3, the second one being 2, 4, the third one being 3, 5, and the fourth one being 4, 6. Just like this, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, 6. Watch what happens as we graph these on a graph. Notice that my origin is right here. I've moved it a little bit. Okay? 1, 3 is going to be 1, 3. Right here. 2, 4. 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. 3, 5 is going to be here. And 4, 6. is going to be right there. There's our four answers. Do you notice that they make a sort of straight line? That is not a coincidence. This particular function has a pattern. Okay? And what this line represents is every single point that this line goes through, you can see there's one here, one here, there, there, all four of those. Every single point that that line hits is going to be a possible answer to our function. Very cool the way that works. Okay. Now we have a special rule when it comes to functions, and that is that each domain can only have one range answer. Basically, each x can only have one y. Okay? Going back to the oven metaphor, when you put something in, only one possible thing is ever going to come out. All right. So, for example, this is this is fine. This is a good example. When we put in one, we get two. When we put in two, we get two. When we put in three, we get two. And we put in four, we get two. That's fine because when we put in a one, there was still only one possible answer. We put in a two, there was only one answer. Three, one answer. Four, one answer. Here's here's what would be bad. You put in one one time to the function, and you get zero. Another time you put in 1 into the function, and you get 4. And another time you put 1 into the function, and you get 5. That would be bad, because basically what that's saying is, when you put 1 into the function, you do not know what's going to come out on the other side. That makes it a bad function, or really it makes it not a function at all. Okay. Again, when we're talking about graphing, there's one more test we can do to figure out whether a function is a good function, or a bad function, not a function at all. And that's called the vertical line test. The way it works is this. If there's a place on the graph where one single vertical line would hit the function two different times, then it is not a function, it's bad. Look here. The red line represents our function. What we need to ask ourselves is, is there any point in this graph where one single vertical line, like this ruler, 
would hit it in more than one spot. Well, let's check here. How many times does it hit the red line? Just once, right here. As we move it, now let's say here. How many times does it hit the red line? Just once. Here, one time. Here, just once, just once. All the way across, this red function is going to pass the vertical line test. <clears throat> that makes it a good function. All right, let's look at this function. <clears throat> As we move the ruler across this time, look right here. How many times does it pass through the red function? One, two, three. That is no good. That means it does not pass the vertical line test. That means this is not a function. All right, this function here starts off good. It only hits the red line once, one time here, one time here, one time here. But look right here. Uh-oh. Now it hits the ruler three different times. That means it's no good, not a function. That is how you check something on the vertical line test. Okay. We're going to go ahead and stop there for today. I know that was a lot of information. Feel free to ask questions tomorrow in class. Make sure you answer the question in the description. So I know you've watched the video, and I will see you tomorrow.